So I saw Hail Caesar, or since there's an exclamation point in the title, I guess it's supposed to be Hail Caesar! But anyway, this is the latest movie to be written, directed, produced, etc. by the Coen brothers and stars so many very talented people, including Josh Brolin, George Clooney, and Alden Ehrenreich. The movie takes place in the early 1950s, right around the end of Hollywood's golden age, and Brolin plays Eddie Mannix, who works for the fictional Capitol Pictures as their, I believe the title they gave him is Head of Physical Production, something like that. Basically, he works as a fixer. His job is to make sure the reputation of Capitol Pictures and all of its stars remain squeaky clean. Not always an easy task. And the character is at least partially based on a real person named Eddie Mannix, who worked for, I want to say it was MGM back in the day. If, if I'm wrong about that, I'm sure someone will correct me. I'm sure many, many people will correct me in the comments, as they often do, but I think it was MGM. And one of the movies Capitol Pictures is currently working on is indeed called Hail Caesar, which is basically Ben-Hur. The star of this movie is a guy named Baird Whitlock, who is played by George Clooney, and he's just trying to get through the last few days of filming on this movie, but suddenly he is drugged and kidnapped by a bunch of communist screenwriters and held for $100,000 ransom. It happens. So Mannix has to find his missing star and get him back to the set so they can finish this damn movie, and hilarity ensues. There was a lot of very funny stuff going on in this movie. It was hilarious. A lot of stuff going on in general. Um, in addition to trying to track down Baird Whitlock, Mannix has a lot of jobs on his hands. I don't know when the guy sleeps, or indeed if he sleeps. Uh, he seems like he just kind of stays up 24-7. He has to deal with an actress played by Scarlett Johansson, who the public sees as the picture of innocence, but in fact she is anything but. She is quite angry and foul-mouthed and currently pregnant out of wedlock, which the studio does not want to let slip out into the public. He also has to make sure no one finds Hail Caesar too offensive, because it is at least partly about the life of Jesus, which leads to a very funny meeting between him and a few Catholic priests and also a Protestant minister and a, a rabbi for some reason. I don't know why the rabbi's there, but why not? He's also trying to dodge a pair of gossip columnists, a pair of identical twins, oddly enough, named Thora and Thessaly Thacker. That's a lot of th uh, Both played by Tilda Swinton, and both are apparently ninjas because they keep popping up out of nowhere and scaring the crap out of them. And on top of that, he's also entertaining a job offer from Lockheed to go work for them as some sort of executive, and trying to fit in time to go to his regular Catholic confession. Again, I don't know when or if the guy sleeps. And every once in a while, the movie kind of interrupts itself to give us a look at the various movies that are currently in production at Capitol Pictures. Scarlett Johansson is doing this kind of synchronized swimming number dressed up as a mermaid, kind of like a Esther Williams type thing. Channing Tatum does kind of a Gene Kelly song and dance number, which gets more than a little homoerotic at times. Hoo boy. And uh, apparently the guy can tap dance. Who knew? Yeah, I guess he actually learned to tap dance just for this movie, but, you know, watching the film, I would have sworn he'd been doing it for years. Aaron Reich plays sort of a singing cowboy who has primarily done westerns throughout most of his career, but has recently been roped by the studio into doing a more sophisticated drama piece which is driving the director of this movie up the wall. The director's played by Rafe Fiennes. I believe the character's name was Lawrence Lorenz. Uh, <laughs> so nice, they named him twice. And this leads to one of the funnier moments in the movie where uh, Fiennes is trying to coach Aaron Reich into just saying one line of dialogue correctly. Just one. Would that it were so simple. That's the line. And, oh man, that's... I'm not even going to try to duplicate what Aaron Reich was doing in this scene. It's so good. Now, because there is so much going on, there are times when the movie can feel a bit unfocused, I suppose. In fact, it really doesn't spend all that much time on the main story of Baird Whitlock getting kidnapped. Most of it is just focused on all these different subplots. And because of that, it does tend to go a bit all over the place. Although, 
Part of that may be intentional just to show how hectic a day in the life of Eddie Mannix can be, but yeah, it, it does get perhaps a bit messy. But what the movie may lack in focus is more than made up for in charm and talent and just general silliness. This movie has an amazing cast. George Clooney is very good in this. He is a complete buffoon, a role that he plays so very well, and he pretty much wears that Caesar costume for the entire movie, even after he gets kidnapped by the, uh, the communist screenwriters. They treat him surprisingly well for a kidnapping victim, and yet no one ever thinks to offer the guy so much as a pair of pants. <laughs> he's just, he's stuck in this damn costume. Alden Ehrenreich is hilarious. I might even go so far as to say he stole this movie. He is so very funny. The scene with him and Fines is just comedy gold. Speaking of Fines, he's also very good in this. It's just a shame he didn't have more to do. Uh, likewise for Scarlett Johansson and Channing Tatum. All very small roles, really, in this movie. And, in fact, there are quite a few people who are really good, solid actors who had really little more than cameo appearances in this film. Francis McDormand has a very small appearance as an editor. Wayne Knight shows up as one of... Uh, Baird Whitlock's kidnappers, and then is really never seen again. Uh, Jonah Hill, that one scene with Jonah Hill that you saw in the trailer, that's his only scene in the movie. That's it. After that, you never see him again. There's also an unseen narrator who chimes in every once in a while, and also an uncredited narrator, although most people seem to be under the impression that it's Michael Gambon, and they're probably right. It certainly sounded like him. And the movie does a great job at paying tribute to the golden age of Hollywood while at the same time poking fun at it. You can tell the Coen brothers have a lot of respect for these types of movies, and even though they are taking the piss out of them, it's pretty clear the jokes are coming from love. In the end, I had a lot of fun with this movie. I would definitely recommend it, especially if you're a fan of the Coen brothers. And even if you're not, it's probably still worth a watch. Just the would that it were so simple scene, that's worth the price of admission alone. And that's all I have to say about Hail Caesar! So until next time, take care.